lesson is for section 5.4. We're going to be solving quadratic equations with imaginary solutions. So our first objective is, of course, to solve a quadratic. And instead of having no solution when we get a negative discriminant, we are going to have imaginary solutions. We are also going to simplify powers of i like we did yesterday. So it's a little bit of review today. So it's, it's supposed to be a pretty short lesson. So um, I have two questions that we're going to go through, two quadratics. And here I have a note that says use the most efficient method for solving the quadratic equations below. So when I look at number one here, I'm going to look first, can I use the square root method? Well, since I have a linear term, I cannot. I'm also going to look to factor. So I'm looking for two numbers whose uh, product is 12 and sum is 6. And when I look at this, I notice that there are no two numbers that will multiply to 12 and add up to 6. So that means that this is not factorable. So I'm going to jump into the quadratic formula. So I'm going to set up the quadratic formula real quick. And now we'll simplify. So we have x equals negative 6 plus or minus. On the inside now, we're going to get 36 minus 48. So this gives me negative 12 over 6. Now this negative 12 here, normally we would stop and we would write no solution. But now because we can write our answer in terms of an imaginary number, we're going to continue and we're going to reduce this radical. So remember, we can split this up into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 12 and the square root of negative 1 we've defined as i. So essentially you're just pulling out the i and then taking a look at the square root of 12. So let's break down the square root of 12 into root 4 and root 3. So now I have i times root 4 is just 2i root 3. So I have x equals negative 6 plus or minus 2i root 3 all over 6. Now the last thing you need to do is always to make sure that you reduce and simplify your answer. So we're going to get a reduced, or I'm sorry, simplified answer after we take out a 2 from each of these terms of negative 3 plus or minus i root 3 over 3. So there's my final answer for problem 1. In question number 2, I'm going to use the square root method here because I notice that I don't have any linear terms. So I'm just going to isolate this x squared by subtracting the 21 over to the other side to get negative 81. Now I'll divide by 3, so I have x squared equaling negative 27. Now when I take the square root, I should have positive or negative root negative 27. Please make sure that you don't forget that positive or negative here because we should always have two solutions. Now I'm going to break up that radical. I'm simply going to pull out the i and break down root 27. So the square root of 27 becomes the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. And now I can uh, just simplify here to get x equaling positive or negative 3i times root 3. And there's my final answer for problem number 2. Now when we move on to simplifying powers of i, this is really similar, basically the exact same as the lesson from yesterday. I just wanted to give you additional practice with this because I think a lot of people have trouble with this, especially with rewriting our um, powers of i in terms of i squared with exponents. So let's go through uh, this really quick. Remember i squared is equal to negative 1 i cubed is the same as i squared times another i, which is just negative 1 times i because i squared is equal to negative 1. And then if I simplify this further, I get negative i. Okay. Last but not least, i to the fourth is the same as i squared squared, which is negative 1 to the second power, which should be a positive 1. So sometimes powers of i simplify to just being a number, like i squared becomes just negative 1, a real number. And same with i to the fourth, that becomes a real number, whereas others stay in terms of i. You're either going to have i or negative i or negative 1 or positive 1. These are the only possibilities for powers of i. So let's begin with um, a, and then I'm going to have you guys do c through f on your own. Okay? I'll do a and b together, and then c through f will be on your own. Okay, problem a, when I have i to the 53rd power, I'm going to write that as i squared and basically, I take 53 and I say, okay, I want to try to cut that in half. Well, I can't cut it exactly in half, so I'm going to go down one less, 52, cut that number in half. So that would be i squared to the 26th power. But this only accounts for 52 i's, so I need to multiply by another i to the first here to get a total of 53 i's. And now I'm going to simplify the, the inside of this as negative 1. So really, this is negative 1 to the 26th power times another i. Negative 1 to the 26th power, this is an, uh, a negative number taken to an uh, uh, even power. So that's always going to be positive. So I have positive 1 times i, which gives me just i. For i to the 2,002nd power here, I'm going to divide this number by 2. So I have i squared to the 2,001st, I'm sorry, 1,001st, my bad. 
1,000 in first power, which is now going to simplify to negative 1 to a very large odd number, and that's just simply negative 1. All right, please go through C through F, try these problems, check with the key, and uh, be ready. Have a great Thanksgiving, and I will see you when you get back.